You know, it's decks like these that remind me of how much I absolutely love this game. What's going on guys, it's Simo. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. This is sort of a throwback to the old Pojo days when they had those card of the day sort of posts. And we're actually going to be doing a deck of the week, if you will. I'm not sure if this is going to be a series or not. If you guys like the idea, be sure to let me know down in the comments. But what I wanted to do was, was take a deck from a particular week and just talk about it, show off some combos. And especially if they're more of a unique variety, I think sometimes we'll show off some of the more meta decks, especially if they're more new. But this is an opportunity to show off a deck that would otherwise just fall under the radar because this was actually played at a New Zealand locals. I want to travel to New Zealand so bad just to meet some of these people because if you don't know, New Zealand is notorious for having some of the craziest decks come out in this game and they actually do like somewhat well. Now, in the grand scheme of Yu-Gi-Oh and like top tier competitive play, is this the direction to go? Most likely not, but it's interesting and it helps generate a lot of thought and brainstorming around some of the potential that these sorts of decks can have, especially when you see how they take advantage of cards in rather unique ways. So this is a penguin deck. I don't exactly even know what to call this. You can call this like penguin combo, penguin control. There's a lot of different cool things going on here. And so I just want to go ahead and dive right in. What this deck all centralizes around is actually a relatively new synchro monster, which is right down here, Penguin Brave. Penguin Brave is a level six synchro and it's actually generic. Eric. It just requires a tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters, and it says your opponent cannot target face down defense position monsters you control with card effects. For people who don't know, the first ever Penguin card, I believe that was printed, I don't know, it might be Bolt Penguin, but the first good one was Penguin Soldier. This is a level 2 aqua flip effect that says you can target up to two monsters on the field, return those cards to the hand. So, this is actually cool because Brave Penguin can actually protect the Penguin Soldier from being disrupted in any way, and hopefully you're going to be able to get that effect off. But that's not all this does. So, you can only use each of the following effects of Penguin Brave once per turn. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can Special Summon a Penguin Monster from your deck in face down defense position. Your main target here is, of course, Penguin Soldier. Now, you might be thinking, okay, that's cool, but you'd still have to flip it up. However, this is where Penguin Brave comes in. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can flip one face down defense position water monster you control face up. This is really strong. You have to think from a competitive standpoint, monster effects are the name of the game. So as long as you have Penguin Brave out and it resolved to get the Penguin Soldier set, you can then, during your opponent's turn, use the effect of Penguin Brave when your opponent uses a monster effect, flip up Penguin Soldier, and bounce two monsters back to their hand. This can be a key normal summon. This could be monsters from the extra deck. Remember, when monsters are getting bounced that were summoned from the extra deck, they're going back to the extra deck, and that's why you see cards like Compulsory Evacuation Device and the like C play because this effect is actually pretty good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Obviously, maybe not necessarily on a flip effect monster, but if you can actually trigger it a little bit more proactively, I guess in this case, it's reactive because your opponent has to use a monster effect, but I digress. It's still really neat. What about the rest of this deck? How is this going to function? Well, stick around because at the end of the video, we'll actually show off a combo for how this deck is pretty much supposed to function and what you're ideally aiming to do. But let's quickly go over the card by card. So first up, we have three Ash Blossom, just a generic way to deal with anything your opponent may have. Ash can hit probably more cards in the game than anything. It's also a level three tuner that you could summon off of Crystron Halky Fibrax in order to help make Penguin Brave or any of your other synchros by extension, but Ash Blossom is just pretty good all around and there's really no reason not to play it. Two copies of Crystron Rose Nyx. This is actually probably the heart and soul of the deck, to be honest, because when Rose Nyx is in the graveyard, you can actually banish it and then you are able to then special summon a Crystron token, which is just a machine water level one attack attack and defense zero token that can't be tributed, but it doesn't matter because we're using that for link material. And that is how we get our plays going. A lot of the cards in this deck are going to be sending the Crystron Rosenix to the graveyard. And there's a lot of ways that we can do that because we want to have that happen every single time. So just two of this, it is a brick. If you get it in the hand, there are ways to get it out of your hand, but you typically just want to send it off one of your other starters. Two copies of Deep Sea Minstrel. So Minstrel is actually a way you can possibly get Rosenix out of your hand, but it's also good too, because for for any Mermail Atlantean players out there who know this already, this card can actually potentially rip hand traps out of your opponent's hand. You can discard this card and a water monster, look at your opponent's hand and banish a card from their hand face up until the end phase. This allows you to get rid of Nibiru or any other card that you feel is going to be problematic in helping you set up your turn one board. So this is a nice way to be able to bypass that. 
One copy of Pankratops for if you're going second. Three copies of Gen X Undyne. We have not seen this since the Mermail days, but man, this card is so cool in this deck. So with Undyne, you can send a water monster from your deck to the graveyard and add Gen X controller to your hand. This is actually a cost, so you actually get to send this to the graveyard no matter what. And then if they choose to negate the effect to add controller to hand, that's perfectly fine because now you have Rose Nixon graveyard and you're basically all set up. So this is a very strong starter in this deck. Mathematician's also in here because it fills the same role. This also can draw you a card if it's killed in battle, but this is better because actually, believe it or not, Gen X controller being in your hand is maybe better than not in most instances with this deck. I'm actually very surprised that a card that's considered a brick has a lot of utility in this deck. Next up is Glacial Beast Polar Penguin. This is a level three water aqua tuner effect monster. If it's special summoned, you can target a monster your opponent controls and return it to the hand. And if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target a card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. You can only use each effect, uh, one of each effect per turn. However, it's pretty much just a card you're going to bring out off of something like Alky Fibrax because it's level three. It can come up. There are some setups where it's good if you're like going second or different things like that. But most of the time, you're just going to be using it for tuner fodder. So if you have it, great. If not, it's not the end of the world. Then two copies of No Penguin, another level three water aqua effect. This one is not a tuner. During either player's turn, when an effect of a penguin monster is activated, special summon this card from your graveyard. This also helps with in tandem with like Deep Sea Minstrel. You can Deep Sea Minstrel away the No Penguin to get this set up to give yourself an extra extender so that's really cool and then you can only use this effect once per turn if this card will be returned from the field to the hand by a card effect of a penguin card banish it instead so again just another extender if you can get it into the graveyard you've got a decent amount of penguin effects in here but you're not playing a lot of bricky penguins then we have the scraps so the scraps can actually fill a similar role to the gen x undines here this is a machine so scrap recycler can actually dump christron rosenix and then golem in tandem with scrap wyvern for any of you who remember Orcus back in the day can just generate you a ton of advantage and help you link climb to be able to hit some of these higher level link monsters such as Appaloosa, such as Axis Code Talker. So it actually really gives the deck a lot of reach while actually helping facilitate some plays with Rose Nix. And then moving on to the vanillas, which believe it or not, we play four of two copies of Bolt Penguin and two copies of Genix Controller. Controller's obviously in here because of Undyne, but Bolt Penguin's actually not bad because we're playing both Painful Decision as well as Unexpected Die. Believe it or not, you actually want to see your vanillas in this deck. That's why you're playing these cards. And so Bolt Penguin is nice because it's a level three non-tuner water. So that's relevant for a myriad of reasons. And Gen X Controller is a tuner that's a vanilla. So basically through Painful Decision and through Unexpected Die, you can always access these normal monsters. But the nice thing is that Rose Nix's token can link up into a Link Spider. And then if you used Undyne to search controller, you can then special summon the controller that you brought off of the Undyne, and then you can use both the controller because it's a tuner, as well as the Link Spider as a non-tuner to go into Halky Fibrax, and already you are off to the races. So that's like your core bread and butter with this deck. I just think it's a really unique way to take advantage of Halky Fibrax in a way that a lot of other decks don't, which is part of the reason why I wanted to showcase this deck. Moving on to the spells, two copies of Fury of Kyrushin. So this is actually a card that started to see play as soon as Torrential started seeing much more play in this more slower control oriented format. Karyushin says, add one torrential tribute from your deck to your hand. That seems insane. The fact that Torrential Tribute is searchable through a spell, like that's nuts, but you also get some added versatility with this card because if a water monster you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So this actually gives your water monster some protection and that will actually matter in some of the setups here. So I think the fact that you get extra utility off of this, aside from the fact you can search one of the most powerful traps in the game at the moment is amazing. We have Monster Reborn just as another extender, three copies of Painful Decision, if you've never seen this, you send a level four normal monster from your deck to the grave and then add a monster to your hand that has the same name. We probably haven't seen this card since like Metal Foes format, but it's still pretty good in the decks you want to play it in. And then Unexpected Die, we've seen a ton of this. It's a way just to get another monster onto the field to help pushing your plays. For the traps, two copies of Evenly Matched, I imagine for if you lose the die roll, so that way you actually have a chance to play against some of these top tier strategies. And then three copies of Torrential Tribute. The nice thing is a lot of the decks right now, you can just set Torrential and pass and then hopefully 
probably just torrential them on the following turn then you don't have to worry about calamities you don't have to worry about like vanity's ruler torrential just hoses so many different decks at the moment that is actually a huge blowout and in tandem with all the rest of the things this deck can do torrential is just a really good all-around card if you're looking to play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh and maybe not at the top top tier definitely consider torrential tribute for your deck for the extra deck Borlode savage dragon we have crystal wing synchro dragon desert locust this actually comes up in the main combo that this deck can do believe it or not and formula synchron we have geomath mech final sigma as a pseudo boss monster for this deck as well as penguin brave which kind of just brings it all together you could play a second one of this if you really want to but this player opted to just play the one for the links we have access code talker we have appaloosa christian halky fibrax we have ip mascarena unicorn two copies of link spider because link spider in this deck is nuts we have marincess coral anemone and we have one copy of scrap wyvern and then for the side deck we have three copies of chaos hunter just stop any of those decks that are going to be doing a ton of banishing chaos hunter can hose any of those types of decks we also have a ton of kaijus we have six kaijus and three copies of interrupted kaiju slumber this is just to deal with stuff like true king of all calamities like any sort of boss monster that this deck's gonna have to deal with going second and three more board wipes in tandem with that is pretty nice we also have three copies of cosmic cyclone for those spell and trap focused decks that you can just side in if necessary so that's going to do it for the deck profile portion of the video now i want to take you over to the solo simulator just so i can show you guys how the main combo of this deck works all right so here we are as you can see the only card we have in our hand is a copy of gen x undyne and i want to show you what this deck is capable of doing with just a lone copy of undyne so we're going to start by normal summoning this copy of undyne and activating its effect as a cost we are going to send a copy of Christron Rose Nix to the graveyard, and then assuming the effect resolves, we're going to add a copy of Genix Controller to our hand. From there, we're going to go ahead and banish the Rose Nix and get a token to our field, and then link off that token for a copy of Link Spider. From here, we can use the effect of Link Spider to special summon the Genix Controller that we had in our hand that's broken, and then we can immediately link both of these off, a tuner and a non-tuner, for Christron Halky Fibrax. Now, you want to make sure you use those two specifically because you actually need undyne for the levels to go into the synchro so how fibrax's effect is going to trigger we're going to go ahead and grab a copy of polar penguin from the deck if you happen to open the polar penguin that's not a big deal you can just use ash blossom or any other level three tuner here because you are able to make anything into the penguin brave because it is a generic monster from here we can go ahead and synchro away both of these monsters into a copy of the penguin brave and then on penguin brave summon we are going to then get a copy of penguin soldier from the deck and penguin soldier will set base down now this board may seem rather innocuous but you're going to realize how it can get out of hand very quickly we're going to go ahead during our opponent's main phase use the second effect of kirstron halky fibrax yes it actually has a second effect that everyone seems to have forgotten about where you can actually banish it from your field to special summon a tuner synchro monster from your extra deck so we have a couple of options here one option is to go into desert locusts now what's cool about desert locusts is that by doing this this will actually force our opponent to discard a card the one thing i don't like about this is that the opponent gets to choose it's not at random but you can wait until your opponent starts to actually use some of their cards maybe waste them and then you can desert locust them when they may only have all good cards remaining in their hand what's also nice is that you now have a level six synchro tuner that that also has the effect to be able to synchro summon at quick effect speed. Now, if your opponent were to use a monster effect, you can now use the effect of Penguin Brave in response to flip up Penguin Soldier and bounce monsters your opponent has back to their hand. That's already pretty strong, but then when you combine that with the fact that Desert Locust has the synchro capability as well, you can synchro away both the Penguin Soldier and the Desert Locust for something like Borload Savage Dragon, and just like that, you have a 3,000 attack monster that also also has a built-in negation what's also nice is that if you don't want to go that route let's go ahead and bring both of these monsters back onto the field you can instead synchro away the desert locusts as well as the penguin brave and go into geomath mech final sigma for anyone who has never seen this card this card is essentially a towers that also does double battle damage when it attacks and some decks don't have outs to that yes it can be killed in battle but you'd be hard pressed to find a deck that can actually hit over something this large without any sort of interaction whatsoever because let's be honest if your opponent only has one or two ways to potentially get into something large enough to hit over this then you could just use something reactive to stop that from happening and protect the final sigma that way this card is just a colossal pain in the ass and a lot of decks
Rex really just can't out it. Another thing you can do here is by putting these monsters back, I'm actually going to go ahead and send the Desert Locusts back into the extra deck. And so bringing back the Christian Halky Fibrax here, you can banish this instead and summon a copy of Formula Synchron. What's cool about this is that you'll actually get a draw here. And then similarly to Desert Locust, you can do the same play. So you could actually use the Synchron as well as your Penguin Brave and once again, go into Borload Savage Dragon. So you actually net yourself a card on that exchange instead of ripping one out of your opponent's hand, depending on what else you can do. So at the very least, a single copy of Gen X Undyne for this deck results in bouncing two of your opponent's monsters back to their hand. You can either draw a card through Formula Synchron or force your opponent to discard a card through Desert Locust and then either end on a Borload Savage Dragon, which is a 3000 walking negation or a Geomath Mech Final Sigma, which is invulnerable to pretty much every single card in the game. That's not bad. Like if we're talking about an obscure rogue deck like this, that is actually a really, really big payoff. And I just think that's awesome. You also have to remember too, this was just with a single card we were able to achieve this board. So obviously I went into the deck, so it would be a little bit thicker than this. I mean, this is the rest of your hand. So if your opponent tries to potentially stop you, you could have led with unexpected die to get either your controller or your bolt penguin onto the field. So you have a way to continue playing through a disruption. You have Rosenix in hand, which eh, kind of sucks. You have Pankratops, which is another great card for going second to help you be able to break your opponent's board. And then Scrap Recycler is just another way to help you going second, because then if you can maybe bait something like with Pankratops as an example, instead of going the Gen X Undyne route, you can actually go the Scrap Recycler route go into an end board of, let's say, Scrap Wyvern plus uh, Scrap Recycler and Scrap Golem. And now you have four link worth of material. Scrap Wyvern probably popped a card on the opponent's field. This Pankertops pops something else. And you can go into something like Axis Code Talker. The, you have a lot of plays with this deck. I'm actually very impressed with how cool this deck is, considering that on the surface, it doesn't really look that powerful. It did take first place at a locals. Obviously, it's a locals, so take that with a grain of salt. But that's just awesome. This is just what I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! And I just had to show this off to you guys. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, please let me know down in the comments. I think this would be a fun little series to do every once in a while, especially to showcase some of these more obscure decks that who knows, maybe rise in popularity, or maybe a deck that may have never had its proper moment in the spotlight. Or if it's a meta deck that's on the verge of just becoming absolutely broken, that might be another reason to watch this series as well. So guys, that's going to wrap it up. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video informative, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive early one-day access to both the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and the Yu-Gi-Oh! progression series. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.